welcome to my workshop guys uh, this is an introduction to hacking secure Wi-Fi networks so I'm just gonna go really basic on the ba on the basic tools so or you guys can understand or uh, in depth about how hackers use these basic tools uh, before we start I just want to tell you guys that this stream it's only for educational purposes do not try this uh, for on any network that you do not have authorization to do it only ne to networks that you have authorization to and suppose like your own network or uh, or a neighbor's network provided you have their permission uh, because it's highly legal if you do it without anyone's without their permission so um yeah so let's start off the stream when we start off the hack we're going to we have to switch our net our network interface mode we usually use managed mode right the two different modes are monitor and managed uh, we usually use managed mode to uh, connect to networks from our phones or from our laptops now the one that we are going to use is monitor mode monitor mode is just reconnaissance of networks reconnaissance as in just listening to all the networks that are around you and our managed mode like I said is just connecting to those networks right and using them in monitor mode you cannot connect to that network you can just listen to them so it's either or and uh, for this hack uh, I have used the network adapter which is in belt in my system it's uh, I did not purchase anything outside uh, so uh, I'll ha I would be using monitor mode or managed mode right so for the hack I completely use monitor mode and that's the reason I have recorded the hack and I'm going to show it to you I'm not going to do it live Right, uh, before I actually explain uh, how we crack our network, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the four-way handshake. Okay, uh, it's just a bit about just a bit of theory. So, uh, what is a four-way handshake? Right now, um, now for uh, for us, computers, laptops, I mean laptops, phones, and all, how we connect to that network? How does a router know that you are the legitimate user? How does it authenticate? That is the process. Most people think. Uh, that just connecting our station that is our computer or our phone to that uh, just type in the password and that is sent to the router and that's the people think that is how you know you connect to that network that is partly true uh, there are four steps in the whole uh, process and the first step is sending a password uh, a hash to that access point a hash is simply uh, it's nothing but the password converted into an encrypt format that which it is sent to the access point right the station or uh, the user types in the password in text format it's converted to hash and sent to the access point now the access point has this password uh, in the hash format also it does not have it in true text format for obvious reasons and uh, when if when the hash both the hashes are correct uh, then uh, step number one is complete and moves to step number two Right. So the second step is identification. Right. So the the access point sends an identification key to the station. Now this identification key is required by the station to create a special ID. This special um, this special ID is created using that identification key that is sent by the access point. And now the special ID is sent back to the access point. This is the, uh, the final step in which uh, with this ID that the station provided to the access point it's going to create a temporary key it's called a transient key which it just it reveals that key to the station uh, so that the station can actually connect to that network now usually uh, there are only four steps but then there is an optional fifth step where the station just replies back to the access point saying that uh, thank you I'm into the network right uh, so this uh, this is how a handshake process actually works between a station that is your phone or laptop and an access point which is your router right that's about it now that was the complete theory part uh, let's just go now into the crack there are five important steps and uh, the own like the, the handshake the authentication and dictionary based brute force cracking those three are the main steps from these important steps right. I'm going to show you exactly how the crack works uh, in detail I have recorded it because it's not actually uh, you know I, I can't actually do the live stream and the crack at the same time uh, so yeah again please read the disclaimer on the description below or uh, do not do this on an authorized network so it's highly illegal welcome to the lazy script framework as you can see this is how it starts off um, now you can read this 
the terms of use. This tool is only for educational purposes and do not try this on any other network without permission and or if you do not have authorization do not do that it is highly illegal as said in the disclaimer. Now I'm going to try this on my own network and under my own responsibility so I'm going to click in yes. As, we, as we've already seen in the previous part of the stream uh, there are two different modes managed and, and monitor mode. Now uh, every most managed modes I uh, have a default name of WLAN0 so I'm just going to click enter as that is a default and now monitor mode the default is WLAN0 mod and we do not actually require the Ethernet connection uh, for this but it requires the name so I'm just going to click enter uh, as a default it's zero now I do not want to change it right this is the latest script framework uh, it has a lot of tools unlike not, not just the Wi-Fi cracking tools. It has tools for spoofing mails. It has tools for auto exploitation of a browser. Uh, it has tools uh, regarding SQL uh, uh, map automating, brute force login to check the database uh, integrity of a website. And it has tools to scan to for uh, for app scans to start and stop a monitor mode uh, to change uh, your MAC address before hacking. So uh, for now, we're going to we are going to focus on the handshake tool uh, which is provided by the lazy script framework so i'm just going to type in 10 and click enter now we, go, we are moving to new terminal uh, we do not need this uh, terminal so i'm just going to minimize that now this is the handshake menu uh, we are going to work as per the numbers listed so the first thing is uh, scanning the networks nearby right so i'm just going to click in one and enter Great, now I want to scan all the, all the channels. So now it's scanning all the channels under monitor mode, not managed mode. Now I'm going to scan until I find my own network. Great, so I, scan, I captured my own network and as you can see, all the other networks are blurred out and my network, I can find my own network. Uh, the one in blue, is an open network uh, as said in the legend because it's a printer so uh, of course it's it has an open network and I found my own network and it is uh, color coded as per the number of active clients I'm gonna click in 19 which is the number uh, corresponding to the name of the network I'm gonna click enter great so now I have to enter the name of the handshake file uh, which I would be needing for the data process for brute forcing Now this is the deauthentication menu. Uh, the deauthentication menu is required for to deauthenticate any clients out of an out of a network. Uh, now uh, there are two scripts which can be run under the latest script framework, which is Airplay NG and MDK3. Now uh, deauthentication happens by uh, selectively deauthenticating uh, some clients or all the clients. Now as per the new certain new security def uh, definitions, uh, the router would understand uh, if uh, if continuously uh, deauthentication packages it's a sent via the network so it might stop the process and therefore our uh, deauthentication periodically is done which is harder uh, which gives a hard time for the network or for the the, the access point or the router to uh, find out if deauthentication packets are sent or it's just normal traffic so now I'm going to use airplay ng as I have uh, demoed uh, with it and it's pretty good so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna click in one and enter I'm going to send infinite amount of deauthentications this time I'm just going to click enter as default zero value. Now this is the deauthenticating menu. Uh, it found uh, a network, a, a client, and it is sending a, a infinite deauthentication codes to that network. And uh, if it just waits to hear a WPA handshake. Uh, this handshake is captured when the you know uh, when the station is uh, trying to connect back to the network. Now I did not, I cannot stay here all day to see if, uh, if you know uh, we found. A WP handshake so I'm going to auto check um, if a handshake is found uh, I'll be clicking 6 and enter and I'm going to put up an interval of 5 seconds and every 5 seconds is going to check if a handshake is captured now this is the auto check for handshake window and uh, suppose a WP handshake is captured it's going to end up right there around there uh, with the SSID 
all right so finally I found my handshake it took about two minutes for me to find it uh, it was uh, targeting my own device and it was sending an uh, infinite amount of these indication packets um, and my phone was trying to reconnect and I went and physically uh, well, physically try to reconnect back to the network and I captured the handshake and uh, this is how it is usually done and the client would, wouldn't even know that someone was trying to send deauthentication packets. Now I'm going to move over to the deauthentication menu and I'm going to check um, the quality of my handshake. Uh, I can check it via, via Pirate or Copati. Both the scripts are under the lazy script framework. I'm going to go ahead with Copati so I'm going to click to and enter. Great, so I, my handshake was found. Now I, I, need, I don't need any of these windows, so I'm just going to control C all of them. Alright, so uh, I can go back and I can, do, can go back to the handshake menu. Right, now I'm quitting. I'm going to capture my, the handshake. I'm just going to check again. Uh, that's kind of fast part of the process. And I'm going to clean my handshake, which is step number five. And um, yeah, uh, this cleaning part is not exactly done properly, so I'm going to do it, research and do it again. Wait. So now we're done with scanning, we're done with capturing, we're done with verification and cleaning, not exactly, but almost done. And now we're going to go ahead with brute force. You got to, we have, we're going to use Aircrack. Now Aircrack is, uh, Aircrack NG is the tool that we are going to use in order to um, brute force the password. Now, the, now that the cap file is with us, saved on our system, we do not need uh, to connect or, you know, to be within the Wi-Fi presence of that network. So we can go ahead and Aircrack. Now Aircrack is a traditional or uh, simple brute force tool that uh, you just given a set of a set of words, a word list in a text file. It can be any amount any amount of words, and it just tries to crack using all those words. And suppose it goes to the end and does not file, it's just going to say, uh, it's just going to skip that word file, and it's going it's going to give up. But uh, this time, for the sake of the stream, I I have uh, put in the password of my own network at the end of the file, uh, and uh, we're going to try and see how long it's going to take to crack, uh, to uh, scan all the files, and. Uh, figure out if it finds finds the password. Let's go ahead and click in three and click enter to air crack. We're going to use the file that we just captured. And now uh, I'm going to find uh, the name of the file uh, which is in my root. Uh, as you can see root word lists. So I'm just going to switch my desktop to find out uh, the name of the file exactly. All right, so we found it. I'm going to switch back uh, and type in the name of the file word file. Oh, it was right there on top. I did not see that. My bad. Okay, now it's done. Now this is the fun part. Now it takes care of everything for us. We don't need to do anything. We just have to keep a look on it. And uh, if we did, and if the script does find, it's going to shout in a key found uh, message. And, uh, you know, that uh, would tell us that the key is that the, that the Wi-Fi network has been cracked. Uh, and, yeah. So now let's talk about exactly how to find words or certain passwords uh, from the network, from the internet. So uh, what I did was uh, there are certain websites which do deal with this uh, every year or on, or on a monthly basis. Uh, certain databases uh, which are cracked, uh, you know, if, the, if those databases do use really weak or medium level passwords, uh, those databases can be cracked and those certain passwords which are used or certain passwords which, which came out of the crack are uh, are compiled into one own one whole uh, word file or te uh, text file and it is put on the net for every month so uh, you could use this file in order to check if uh, you know the same password has been used uh, for any other network so I'm just gonna fast forward the whole uh, air cracking thing because it's gonna take some more time Alright, so right now I found my password. I put the password at the end of the file just so that you know that uh, 400,000 keys, about 400,000 keys have been scanned in under, in under 4 minutes, about 4 minutes give or take. So you can see about 100,000 words in a span of 1 minute, which isn't a great speed 
but uh, this as this is the introduction uh, into hacking or uh, cracking WP networks I have chosen this the basic the most basic tool that uh, hackers use to crack a network all right so um, there you go that was the crack we completed it so if you guys have any queries regarding this that's my that's my mail ID right there Mohit and uh, if you guys have any queries general on a general basis regarding regarding ethical hacking um, we can uh, mail Pranav uh, Pranav this mail uh, he is our ethical hacking director so I'm sure he'll be glad to help you guys out on anything so, um, so that's it I guess I'll uh, see you guys in the next one